What is going on, Stallions? Welcome to the Gamer Heaven, where we focus on the past, present, and future of gaming. The Razer Kyo Pro is a pretty darn good webcam. I mean, it'd have to be for $200. However, the default settings out of the box leave a little bit to be desired, and I haven't found any tutorials on Google or YouTube about optimizing the settings. I have played around with this thing extensively daily for about the last month, and I'm gonna share with you guys my personal settings to get the most balanced, warm, rich picture out of this bad boy, as well as a couple effects you can turn on to make your background really pop. Let's get it. All right, so we're inside of the Razer Synapse 3 application. This is the program that you will be using to adjust settings uh, inside of your webcam here. So HDR, I would strongly recommend turning this on, especially if you have lighting effects behind you, such as RGB or LED lights, as it does give them a very, very rich natural tone that looks pretty true to what you see in your actual room in real life. So as you can see with HDR on, that little lamp that I have on my desk there, that scented oil diffuser is pulsating. It doesn't look like that in real life. It's obviously a solid or static color. However, as it is through the camera lens and HDR is on, that will start flashing. So it's something to keep in mind. Things like television screens and uh, RGB LED lights might be pulsating and you might need to go through and change your settings a little bit and your actual devices around your room. So it's not doing it anymore because that is extremely distracting and disorienting for people watching a stream or a YouTube video. Now, autofocus isn't fantastic on this webcam in low light situations. However, I have an Elgato key light on this side and I have a large window with a lot of natural light on this side. So I'm pretty well illuminated right now, quite evenly lit. However, if you have poor lighting uh, where it's at nighttime and you don't have a, a ring light or a key light or anything like that, the autofocus is going to struggle a little bit and that is when I would recommend setting a manual focus. So you're gonna turn this slider off and what you're gonna do is go all the way up and then slowly taper back until you are crisp, clear, and in focus, which for me would be right about there. But I'm gonna leave autofocus on as I generally have pretty good lighting in my room. Now for the field of view, I played around with this quite extensively and here's what I will say. I do appreciate the fact that it has three field, field of views. I wish it was uh, hardware controlled and not software controlled. It's not an actual slider on some kind of a glass lens. What it is is a software based um, software-based FOV or field of view. So technically it's cropping the image in, but it doesn't lose any resolution, which is very, very nice. Now, there's a reason I have it on medium. I wanna see the most of my background, my backdrop, my decorations and whatnot. However, when you go to wide, there are some problems. As you can see, the image is kind of like a fisheye. It's kind of blown out, curved on the sides. And it doesn't look very good, to be honest. It's uh, my TV looks like it's bent or curved right there. Same thing with the door. It looks like that that's completely curved. It doesn't look uh, too fantastic. Now, if I go to narrow over here, it looks really good, but it's cutting out a little bit of my backdrop there. Now, medium seems to strike a pretty fine balance. There still is a slight curve there, but it's really nothing too noticeable. And um, I think that I think for me personally, for my backdrop, that is the best uh, option here. What I would do for you is depending on what backdrop you have, what background, I would mess around between narrow and medium. I would kind of steer clear of wide to be 110% honest. Now over here, we're going to select default settings just to get started. Here are some of the preset modes. As you see, cool is extremely cool on the spectrum. They are not subtle at all. Vibrant, I, I do think vibrant is a pretty good default setting. It drops down the brightness of skosh and turns up the contrast and the saturation, which I think makes uh, the image really pop especially from your background. However, so I recommend setting up some custom settings here. And what you kind of want to do is color match with your lights. So for example, I have the Elgato key light in front of me and that should be set at uh, 4,700 Kelvin. That's generally well, yep, what I keep them at for my uh, ring light that's on my, or um, for my key light that's on my face. And then also I have a ring light off to the side over there, which uh, will illuminate this side of my face and also kind of separate me from the background. We can turn that off for now though, as I do have it's day right now and I do have some pretty good sunlight out there. So over here, you can leave white balance uh, on auto or you can type in your actual room lighting, which as you see is a little bit blue, but we're gonna do some adjustments here. I would recommend turning the brightness at 125. So that's down just a tiny skosh. Uh, go ahead and boost the contrast up to about 140. Same thing on the saturation, about 140. And now you're gonna play with your white balance over here until it looks good to you. So auto actually doesn't look too bad, but we're gonna go ahead and play with it a little bit. Obviously the, the extremes you kind of want to stay away from being on the very, very blue or low Kelvin scale or the very high, warm, rich red um, spectrum as well. 
All right, so we're going to leave it at 5380 for now. I kind of like a bit of a warm look. It kind of makes my skin look a little bit better and whatnot. Takes away from the bags under my eyes, so that's nice. And then if you click on advanced settings over here, this is going to pop up your Windows settings. So brightness, contrast, and white balance, as you see, are aligned with what we set in here. So these are synced up or coordinated. Don't mess with those because it's just going to affect them over here in Razer Synapse. Since there is not sharpness, you can't adjust that manually here. I recommend bumping up from the default, uh, which is about... 120 to about 150 or 170 um what that does is crispens up the image a little bit to where uh to where the lines of your face kind of pop out a little bit your your chair your mic basically things that are close to the camera i.e in the autofocus will kind of pop out a little bit if you go overboard with this, the sharpness it will look a little bit um organic or a little bit uh, artificial pumped in it won't look as organic and natural as setting something like a moderate sharpness now backlight compensation there's only two options here zero and one or basically on or off and as you see turning it on actually brightens up the image quite a bit but does not wash your face out either so i kind of do recommend having this on now gain, I have messed around with this extensively and have yet to notice an actual difference. I don't see it making any changes whatsoever, so that's up to you to play with that. For me, I'm just going to leave it off because I don't see any kind of difference. And then power line frequency, aka anti-flicker, I would leave that at 60 hertz, which is the uh, default. And then over here in this tab, camera, camera control. Zooming in will literally just crop the image in. I don't recommend doing that because as this is a webcam, you're not using an actual glass lens to zoom in with uh basically a, a kit lens you're using a webcam it's just software cropping in so it's going to get more distorted and blown out and washed out and create a bunch of noise by zooming in like that Zo uh, focus you cannot adjust because it is uh, we are currently using autofocus if you were to uncheck this box and start adjusting the slider this will turn off and you would be adjusting your focus that way but this is literally the same effect as the slider uh, when you turn autofocus off over there. And then exposure is checked auto by default. You can uncheck that. And as you see, it makes the image look ridiculous. I look like I got a black eye over here. There's like purple on my fingers. Uh, my whiteboard looks insane. We're going to go ahead and leave that on. Make sure you click apply whenever you set these settings. And if you mess anything up, just hit default over here. Now in practice, pan and tilt should actually pan and tilt your image. However, it doesn't do anything. Even if you turn it on, hit apply nothing so we're just gonna return that to its standard value and then low light compensation by default that is checked i would leave that on considering it does not kick in or start doing anything until it senses a low light situation where basically all your lights are off turned off my face light there and it'll start to try and balance out all of those shadowy areas obviously it's a webcam even if it's a 200 dollars webcam it's still a webcam it's still a 1080p webcam uh, granted, it does have HDR, which will help with the dynamic range, but it is going to struggle in low light situations. All right, now one more thing that can add a really, really sweet effect that will make your webcam look absolutely awesome is a software program to blur your background. Now, the one that I've been using recently is called NVIDIA Broadcast. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, so even, you know, an older generation like a 10 series, you can still download the software. Um, I currently have a 3080 and it is able to power and render this effect very quickly now granted that is another resource that's going to be taken so if you're streaming or uh, screen recording for youtube or something you know not only is it capturing your gameplay and encoding all of that but plus your webcam image but then an additional software program that is blurring your background but for my uh, rig it doesn't really seem very resource intensive i don't lose any frames in game or on my uh, streams, so that's good um, and it looks phenomenal. So as you see, my background's super crisp right now. You can see it clear as day. I don't really want that. You kind of want to simulate that you're on an actual photography style camera, like a mirrorless or a DSLR, and you have that real uh, good depth of field where basically you're in focus and your background is blurred out slightly. So that way you are the focus of the, the stream. And over here in camera, which is still in beta, we are going to select the webcam that we're using, which is the Razer Kyo Pro. And since we do have HDR on, this will be at 1080 30. If you have HDR off with this webcam, you will be able to go to 1080 60, which is nice to have that fluid, which is nice to have that fluid motion and whatnot. However, um, as it is a webcam, you're probably just going to be doing some talking head commentary or whatnot. You're probably not going to be jogging around your room or anything. So it's not a huge deal, but don't get me wrong. 60 does look a lot more fluid and smooth. And basically, we're going to select this effect right here background blur. 
And as you see, if I turn it off, my background's all crisp and clear, but by using this slider here, you are able to blur out your background and you can go super aggressive where virtually my entire background is super blurred out, as you can see. That's a little bit too blurry for my liking. So we're just gonna put it on its lowest setting, which is right here. And as you can see, this is off. Look at my desk though, my modem and my VR headset. Bam, on, look at my, my uh, backdrop, my wall back there, bam. That just adds a really nice uh, cinematic look. And those guys are my personal settings for the Razer Kyo Pro. Hopefully this video is beneficial and aided you to get your webcam set up as well. If it was informative and entertaining, liking the video helps it to get seen by more people, which in turn helps me to grow my small channel, which I do greatly, greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I do a lot of news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing. See you guys in the next one. Peace.